your forecast first. Sponsored by Wegmans Meals to Go. Here at the noon hour, shifting bands of lake snow with embedded snow squalls reducing visibility to whiteout conditions at times. We're tracking the snow and we're tracking the bitter cold in my forecast. Also ahead, a woman who uh, uh, pleaded guilty to child sex abuse has been sentenced. We'll have that story and lawmakers in Washington prep for what could be the third presidential impeachment in history. From the team you can trust, this is News 8 at noon. Good afternoon. Welcome to this special digital version of News 8 at noon. I'm Mark Ruba. A woman from Greece will spend the next 25 years in prison. She was sentenced today after pleading guilty to child sex abuse. Josh Navarro was in the courtroom and joins us in studio with more. Josh. Mark, 35-year-old Bonnie Hughes was sentenced in federal court this morning. We also learned the victim in this case was Hughes's daughter. Hughes has pleaded guilty to production of child pornography last year. According to prosecutors, Hughes sent explicit photos of her 10-year-old daughter to her friend, John Kohlmeyer, who then had sexual contact with the victim on multiple occasions. The judge said in court this morning that Hughes didn't protect her daughter and instead set her up with a sexual predator. The defense attorney tried to lower her sentence, but all things considered in the case, the judge imposed the maximum sentence. In addition to her sentencing, Hughes cannot have any contact with anyone under the age of 18 and must register as a sex offender. Live in the, uh, in the studio, Josh Navarro, News 8. Josh, thank you. The other person in the case, John Kohlmeyer Jr., recently sentenced to 25 years in federal prison. Well, a woman has died after a two car crash on Brooks Avenue in Rochester. It happened right around seven o'clock last night. Officers tell us the car was going uh, near Westfield Street. It veered into the opposite lane and struck another car head on. The driver in that car, a 46 year old Rochester woman was killed. Two people in that other car uh, were injured, but we're told they are expected to recover. Police have not yet released the names of the victims. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. Rochester teachers, students and parents all gathering again last night to protest pending job cuts in the district. They are all hoping the school board will delay a vote on a cut of more than 150 teachers. The job cuts are part of a plan to make up for a multi-million dollar budget deficit. After meeting with the teachers union, schools superintendent Terry Dade says the RTA can reduce layoffs through concessions. But he doesn't think that will happen before tomorrow's planned vote. Right now, it seems unlikely that uh, the protocols and processes that RTA has in place would allow for uh, those concessions to be considered. I'm going to move forward with placing my plan uh, before the Board of Education to vote on. Superintendent Dade has proposed laying off more than 150 teachers, 32 non-teachers and 12 administrators. If the school board approves the layoffs tomorrow in their vote, the cuts would take place next month. Governor Cuomo signing new legislation today prohibiting telemarketers from calling during a state of emergency. The law will help keep the lines of communication open for emergency notifications and other information. And it's an historic day on Capitol Hill where President Trump is expected to become just the third U.S. president to be impeached. Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill with the latest. House will be in order. Lawmakers in the House of Representatives began the morning going over the procedures for how they'll debate articles of impeachment against President Trump. The House will vote on the two articles back to back. Article 1 is abuse of power. Article 2, obstruction of Congress. If a president undermining our national security and using the federal government for his own selfish personal gain is not impeachable conduct, then, Madam Speaker, I don't know what is. Democrats have been searching for a reason to impeach President Trump since the day he was elected. Democrats say the president abused his power by pressuring Ukraine to announce an investigation into his political rival, Joe Biden and then obstructed Congress by blocking White House officials from complying with the House inquiry. Before lawmakers vote, they'll have six hours of debate divided equally between Democrats and Republicans. Possible procedural motions could add hours to that time frame. In a tweet this morning, President Trump asked, can you believe that I will be impeached today by the radical left, do nothing Democrats, and I did nothing wrong? It comes after he sent a scathing letter to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi saying, you have cheapened the importance of the very ugly word impeachment, adding that more due process was afforded to those accused in the Salem witch trials. Other presidents in the, in the future 
Unless they do something about this, other presidents are going to have to live with this. Pelosi responded, calling the president's letter really sick. The president said he will not be watching today's impeachment vote, and he looks forward to the trial in the Republican-controlled Senate. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Well, lawmakers in Washington certainly focused on more than the impeachment. Yesterday, the House approving a $1.4 trillion spending package that will fund the government through the fiscal year 2020. The legislation would include or will include a military pay raise, money for a border wall, funding for election security, and gun research at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. If the Senate approves the spending plan, it will head to the president for a signature. He has until Friday to sign it to avoid a government shutdown. Congress is also expected to vote on President Trump's USMCA trade bill within the next few days. It is a new holiday musical called Wrapping Around the Christmas Tree. Perfect time of year for it, right? Uh, at the Lyric Theater, December 20th through the 22nd. Delighted to welcome the uh, originator of this concept, <laughs> the director as well, Eric Johnson, back to the program. Thanks. And Dresden Engel, who is Darcy uh, in the cast as well. This is a great cast, by the way. Great to have you here as well. Thank you. All right, Eric, let's start with you because sure. uh, you, uh, you, you cooked up this, this this musical. <laughs> What's this about? So it's loosely based around real life events, but it follows two competing wrapping booths, gift wrapping booths in a local mall. And it's the senior citizens that have had this, their booth for many, many, many years versus the kids from the middle school running a robotics team that have to raise money to go to Florida. I bet this was a tough sell dressed in to, to bring you <laughs> I, on board. I, I, huh? I hate to laugh. It just no. sounds like it's going to be hilarious. We are having so much fun. So much fun. Like, I, people are, I think we're getting mad at me at rehearsal last night because I just kept laughing at the lines so much. And it's like, you've heard them before, let it go. But uh, yeah, it's, there's a little bit of everything. There's like humor for the moms and dads as well as the kids and grandma and grandpa and everybody. Um, you know, we both try to get Santa to move mm -hmm. a little closer to us. And then mm -hmm. maybe there's some dancing gingerbread man. And then maybe, like, it's just, it's really two hours of just incredible fun for the whole family. Now, you play Darcy. How does Darcy factor into the hijinks I'm here? Darcy Colshaw. I am the chaperone of the robotics club, and I think that I'm pretty special. And I make believe I'm a lot younger than the elderly ladies at the other wrapping booth than I really am. Mm -hmm. And make some prices right jokes now and then, and yep. things that just maybe aren't so fair, but all in fun. And then there's that warm, it's a wonderful life moment at yep. the end. Mm. Well, you got to have that, right? We yeah. won't give it away, of course. Right. Uh, but we do want to give away uh, sort of the idea behind this, Eric. And, you know, you take a concept like this and then you start putting words to it and creating characters and all that. Talk about that process a little bit and how you know when you've got it just the way you wanted it. Right. Well, you know, I think that the theme with this show is that it's... Um, it's bringing generations together, right? You have the kids, you have the senior citizens, you have the parents in between, and all the generations are at odds with each other at one point or another in this show. And by the end, without giving away too much, they come together, they find a way to work together. They have to, to be able to succeed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good theme for around the holidays is how do we all work together and how do we all get on the same page so that we can accomplish our goals. And so the nice thing about this show is that it's set contemporary too. So this is a, this is a Christmas musical where uh, you're talking about things that are happening in the world right now. There's real life events. We talk about things that are happening in Rochester. Mm -hmm. We mention RIT, we mention uh, different media outlets. So it's, it's very, uh, it, you can relate with it. All right, we're looking forward to it. We're not rocking around the Christmas tree, although we may. We're wrapping around the Christmas Rapping. tree this yes. year. Good luck with it. going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Again, uh, the 20th through the 22nd at the Lyric. Tickets this way, 667-0954 or online at ofccreations.com. As always, we'll share that on our site as well at rochesterfirst.com. From the weather team you can trust, certified most accurate, here's meteorologist Josh Nichols. Plenty of variability and some volatility to our weather today. This was just a few hours ago. Our time lapse from Pinnacle Hill showing you uh, the changeable sky, the towering clouds from the lake effect snow band that was looming large over Lake Ontario here for a while. And note, within the last few frames of the time lapse, how quickly the skies cloud up and boom, there we are here at the lunch hour dealing with a quarter mile visibility and heavy snow. You can anticipate snow squalls here through this afternoon. Poor visibility at times as these uh, shifting lake snow bands make their way from north to south. 
Still going to be that way into this evening, especially along the 104 corridor north and east of Rochester. Overnight, you're really going to notice the brutal cold. In fact, you're going to notice the brutal cold into this evening in addition to the snow squall. So that afternoon commute, not going to be fun when you consider the tumbling temperatures, the whipping winds, the lake snows flying, and of course dealing with the wind chills. So uh, I know it looks like quite the whiteout out there, certainly is, and it'll be like that uh, for, you know, say 20 or 30 minutes at a time, and then the sky will uh, maybe in some cases partially clear just like that. And the visibility will remarkably improve too. Two to six inches of actual snowfall, but wind whipped uh, through this afternoon and into tonight. Some of the higher tallies being realized along the 104 corridor. And if you're not shoveling, you are definitely shivering. No one escapes that through this afternoon, through tonight, through the overnight. In fact, look at these wind chills flirting with zero by dinner time, and then overnight they are squarely sub zero. Again, we're dealing with uh, at times whiteout conditions in Rochester. The visibility dropped to a quarter of a mile very quickly in this one squall that we're tracking. 23 degrees, the wind out of the west northwest, and starting to pick up as the Arctic boundary is now pushed through, and so does this lake snow bang, crashing ashore very quickly, pretty prolific. And it actually has triggered snow squall warnings. They are in play uh, for uh, another half hour or so till about 12:45 p.m. for Genesee, Southern Monroe, Northern Livingston, and northern sections of Ontario County. You can see that band. It is uh, basically along the entire length of Lake Ontario. And our Syracuse base sweep doing a beautiful job picking it up here in Wayne and northern Cuga County. These darker greens representing some very heavy snow. This will move south towards the thruway over the course of the next half hour or so. But note that the back edge of that squall is not that far off from Rochester. It's up towards uh, the northwest corner of Monroe County. And again, it will continue to drop south. So here's your future cast. That band drops to the south, breaks up some. Look at the temperatures here for the middle of the afternoon. Mid-teens across the board. And note that additional bands of lake snow will form and drop south as well. Through the night tonight, overnight, we're all shivering, as I mentioned. And there will be additional lake snows to talk about. Northeast Monroe, Wayne counties, all the way through the first part of tomorrow. So the morning commute is also going to be tricky. There's the eight-day forecast. We're looking at sharply colder weather, as I mentioned, through uh, today, tonight, tomorrow. It will start to dry out on Friday, 24-year top temp. Not as harsh on Saturday. In fact, by Sunday, we're back into the 40s. We could even see some sunshine as well into early next week. And the outlook for Christmas right now, fairly quiet, mm. unlike what we have this afternoon and tonight. Stay safe on the roads. Remember in lake effect, visibility can vary dramatically within a short period of time. Yes. One moment it's sunny, the next minute a whiteout, and that's the way it's going to be for this afternoon. Right. If you're heading out in the car, be prepared for those conditions, that's for sure. Josh, as you know, we are used to lake effect around these parts. Yeah. A lake quake, a kind of a different story, a different, right? different, yeah. Yeah, uh, an earthquake uh, recorded this morning, uh, about eight miles away from Sodus Point, out in Lake Ontario, uh, around 3 a.m. A magnitude of 2.1, so, and it was about a mile deep uh, in, in the lake as well, so it might have scared a few fish, but that's just yeah, about it. They got quite the wake-up call. I think it was at 2.40-something this morning. There you go. Yeah, like we do usually, actually. That's right. <laughs> breakfast, anyone. Right. All right. Uh, Speaking and of breakfast. That's right. We have a tradition here every year at News 8. It's called Cookie Day, and today was the day. Our News 8 at Sunrise team uh, coming together, bringing in lots of tasty treats. Uh, our director, Lise, and our technical director, Bob Pistecki, uh, bringing in a lot of these goodies you're seeing right there. And we all partook and enjoyed. Uh, and uh, I have to give credit uh, to my wife as well, Dawn, who uh, did some fine baking as well for <laughs> Cookie Day this year. And uh, safe to say, uh, we. Uh, weren't shy about enjoying the treats. And I was happy to consume a few of them, too. Yes. It was good. I'm also still running on a sugar high, I believe. you got to have a sampling, <laughs> right? You can't just have one kind. Oh, no, no, you no. you got to try them all. That's a smorgasbord. That's it. <laughs> all right, and that is it for this special digital edition of News 8 at noon. As always, we appreciate you tuning in. Enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll see you on the air and online. So long. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and our apps for both news and weather.